This video will explain how to wire and use a programmable logic controller or PLC together with a contactor and thermal relay to start a three-phase or single-phase electric motor. Here we show the diagrams for both control and power and the devices that are needed to implement this circuit. We can see that in the control diagram a PLC is used, which uses the graphical contact language known as ladder or KOP. Note that this is a video for educational purposes where the use of a Siemens brand PLC will be explained in a practical way. If you want to implement a direct start of a motor, it is not necessary to use a PLC since wired logic is more than enough. Here above and at the end the video with the explanation. Before wiring, let's see what elements and devices are going to be used and what must be taken into account. In my country, a single phase voltage of 220 volts between phase and neutral and 380 volts between phase and phase is used. So the PLC is from the S7-1200 series with alternating current supply. The contactor coil is also supplied with 220 volts. If you live in a country where the supply voltage is different from the one indicated here, then you have to use devices that can be supplied with that voltage level, which can be 110 volts, even 24 volts. With animations I will do the wiring and I will explain step by step. From the phase and neutral output of the bipolar thermal magnetic switch we take two cables to the power supply terminals L1 and neutral of the PLC. For this case the S7-1200 controller of CPU-1214C, AC, DC, RLY has been taken as a reference, so it can be supplied with an alternating current voltage between 120 to 240 volts. This controller internally has a source that allows its output to have 24 volts in direct current to be used in the command or control part. It is necessary to make a connection from terminal M to 1M which works as a reference to 0 volts in the reading of the PLC digital inputs. From terminal L1 of the PLC which is the phase cable we take it to the output terminals and connect it to terminal 1L which will allow us to feed the output bank 1 with 220 volts. If in your case you use another voltage level, you can also connect it to terminal 1L and not necessarily the one I am using. From output Q0 we take a cable to the thermal relay and connect it to terminal 95. Remember that the thermal relay fulfills the function of protecting the electric motor against overloads. This device consists of two contacts, one that is normally closed which is made up of terminals 95 and 96 and another normally open contact which is made up of terminals 97 and 98. These are auxiliary contacts which are used for the control part. If you want to know more details about this device, in the description and at the end of the video there are the links. Continuing with the wiring, from terminal 96 a cable is taken to the contactor and connected to terminal A1 which is to feed the coil. From terminal A2 of the contactor coil, a cable is taken and connected to the neutral terminal of the thermal magnetic switch. Up to this point, let's do a brief review. We have already wired the controller to its power terminals L1 and neutral. If in your case it has two phases and no neutral, you can place them in any order. Then we have taken the phase cable to feed the PLC outputs. From the PLC output we then take the power cable to the thermal relay and then to the contactor. But many will be wondering why the wiring goes to the thermal relay and then to the contactor, and why it doesn't go directly to the contactor. Remember that terminals 95 and 96 of the thermal relay make up the normally closed contact and as long as there is no fault, it will let the current pass to feed the contactor. If the motor is overloaded or overheated, the thermal relay contacts change state and thus allow the contactor to switch off. This is why the wiring goes first to the thermal relay before reaching the contactor. Now let's continue with the wiring of the push buttons. From the L plus terminal, we run a cable with a 24 volt power supply to one of the push button terminals. From the remaining terminal of the green start button, we run a cable to the I0 input of the PLC. Likewise with the remaining terminal of the red stop button we run the cable to the I1 input. Remember that the green start button must be normally open and the red stop button must be normally closed. Otherwise, in the PLC programming it must be done differently. From the L plus terminal, 
A cable with a 24-volt power supply is run to the thermal relay, which must be connected to Terminal 97, and from Terminal 98 a cable is brought back to the PLC which must be connected to input I2, this in order to inform the controller when there is a fault in the motor and it is detected by the thermal relay. Up to this point we have almost all the control wiring, only the indicator lights are missing. From the PLC output Q1 a cable is taken to the green pilot light which will indicate that the system is working. From the remaining terminal of the pilot light a cable is taken and connected to neutral. Finally, from the PLC output Q2 a cable is taken to feed the warning or fault indicator light. From the remaining terminal it is taken and connected to neutral. These indicator lights when activated will be fed with 220 volts, since that is the voltage level that is being used to perform this practice. For the wiring of the power scheme it is much easier. From the outputs of the three-pole thermal magnetic switch we take the three cables to the three power terminals of the contactor and then from the power outputs of the thermal relay it is taken to the terminals that must later be connected to the electric motor. The green cable is the ground protection cable. So we already have both diagrams wired. This circuit not only works for three-phase motors, but also for single-phase motors or any other load that needs to be controlled with a PLC. In order to upload the ladder programming to the PLC, you must use network cables that you must connect to the RJ45 connector of the PLC and then connect it to your computer. On your computer, you must have the ladder programming ready which you must upload or load to the PLC through the network cable. Once all this is done, you will have everything ready and you can do the tests that you require convenient for this study. Here we have what was explained above in a real implementation with the aforementioned devices. We have the network cable connected to the PLC and the other end to a laptop. We raise the control switch lever. We see that the PLC starts already with the ladder program previously loaded. We also raise the three-pole power switch lever. In my case I do not have an electric motor, that is why I will do the demonstration with a light. We have three inputs to the PLC. The start button the stop button that are in this box next to the start indicator. The third input is sent from the normally open contact of the thermal relay. We also have three outputs connected to the PLC. The first output is connected to the closed contact of the thermal relay and then to the contactor. The second output is connected to the on-off indicator light. And the third output is connected to the overload fault indicator light. We do the first test. We press the start button. As we see, the light turns on, indicating that the system is in operation. If the motor were connected, the shaft would start to rotate. If we press the stop button, the light turns off because the PLC disconnects the contactor. We do the following test. We press the start button again, the light turns on again. Now we are going to simulate that there is a fault due to overload in the motor. So we press the test button on the thermal relay. As we can see in here, the fault indicator light is activated and the contactor automatically opens and disconnects the light or motor to protect it. Then, even if we press the start button to turn the light back on, this will not be possible because the thermal relay is faulty. What we would have to do is check the motor and repair the fault and then reset the thermal relay by pressing the reset button. Remember that the thermal relay can be in two modes, in automatic or manual mode, in this case the reset is manual. After resetting the relay, we press the start button, as we see everything starts working again by turning on the light. So this is how this small circuit works with programming. The use of a PLC is very broad since you can add more inputs such as sensors and also control more loads through its output. For those who may wonder where the thermal magnetic switches are connected, for this practice I have it connected from an electrical outlet. Well friends, that would be all for this video. If you want to know more about PLCs or the latter language, contactor or thermal relay, here at the end and in the description of this video are the links so you can review and understand better. Give it a thumbs up and share this information. See you later.